Freedom's the answer. What's the question? You're listening to Ernest Hancock. Well, Eleanor from Cato said, uh, how many copies we need and, uh, you know, where is she going to send them? Well, you know, we just might have us uh, some fun. <laughs> well, that's nice of Cato. They do that. with the, the, They'll get in, the, you know, the good category. All right, so we're working on that. Well, yeah, go ahead and have, you know, I, you know, Sierra, you know, I just have her come on. We'll just talk about it on the air. This is, uh, um, it's all part, I hopefully you can understand. Can, can she come on there and talk about it real quick? Um, I need to call her again. Okay, we'll just find out. How many is she sending? I don't know. I'm emailing her right now. Okay, and how much and whatever. You know, get get the whole spiel. You know, freeze better than not. But, of course, I'll pay for it. But, you know, the thing is, is that everything is the, it's all under the same umbrella. Those that want to be left alone, those won't leave them alone. If you can get this bumper sticker mentality, because if you got to do it more than a bumper sticker, then you're just BSing me, okay? You're just blah, 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 blah. You're just bernanke in me, okay? So I just, you know, it's a inflation bad. <laughs> can, he, can he come in with a bumper sticker or a tattoo on his forehead? You know, so I'm looking forward to doing this to find out what kind of resources we can get directed at this thing. Because if we can go with the idea that People in other countries around the world, and certainly in Arabic-speaking countries, if they can understand the concept, self-ownership, that governments are just stealing from them their wealth by just keep printing money and then indebting them for it. You know, you got it on you, and you're going to be a slave forever. You know, that's one thing I, I remind her to get John Perkins on again, and John Perkins wrote the book, uh, the Confessions of an Economic Hitman, and it was an entire generation or two of which he was a part that created these problems that we have right now. It was the, behind it was this philosophy of empire, and he was one of the front soldiers in this empire. Now, right now, I want to talk about this with um, Pal. We have <clears throat> senior. U.S. Marine says multiple platoons are headed to Egypt. In addition to that, we got Army officials suggest U.S. troops might be needed in Mexico. We're going to Mexico. And, you know, well, let's go ahead and talk about that first. Pal, uh, I mean, does this surprise you? No. In fact, I when I, I saw the article on the Mexico, we were they, some senior military guy for the United States saying, well, we're needed to fight the drug war in Mexico. It's like, oh, swell, and also support the Mexican government, I'm sure. But uh, Yeah, he started calling them insurgents. And and then, I, exactly, it's like, oh, uh, they were probably born and lived there, but hey, yeah, they're insurgents. <laughs> but uh, uh, the other thing, uh, I made a quip to you when you brought it up, and I, I was unaware of the fact that uh, that they were also sending troops to Egypt. I'm like going, because that's exactly my first thought when I saw sending to Mexico. Yeah, and Egypt too. I'm sitting there thinking, yeah, of course they're sending. They're yeah, I'm going, no, they already are. You know, the other thing was is that Hillary was saying, yeah, we can't stop the drug war. There's too much money in it. I know. And and, she actually said and, it. And that is still reverberating around. And I, I haven't heard them come out and say, you know, the typical, oh, well, she was misquoted or she misspoke or she mis It's like, uh, no, it seems like that's pretty much like, yeah, sorry, there's too much money in it. So, we, you know, legal drug trade, which, of course, is reputed that Bill Clinton was involved with the Bush family, Bush crime family in Mena, Arkansas, and the cocaine deliveries from Afghanistan. You know, and the, the heroin deliveries. It, it, you know, this is it. It you know, it never stops. I mean, and and when you're around long enough, you've been activists such as us for you know. I think it it only takes about twenty years. You know, like three, four election cycles. You know, for president. You know, twelve, sixteen years. Yeah, it's pretty clear. By twenty years, you're going. I get it. Okay, I get it. Same people saying the same stuff. Blah 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 blah. You know, but here's something that's an inspirational. Uh, private moon race team signs rocket deal with SpaceX. Did you know about this? Nope. Okay, let me tell you that. This is good. Because Pal and I follow this quite a bit. 
A privately funded team hoping to win a multi-million dollar race to the moon has figured out how it's going to get most of the way there aboard a commercial rocket that could launch in 2013. The team Astrobotic Technology Incorporated, which aims to take home the Google Lunar X Prize, has signed a contract with private spaceflight firm Space Exploration Technology, SpaceX for short, which has Falcon Falcon 9. Yeah, Falcon that's, 9, which is made to go to Mars, okay? This is this is the whole concept that's behind what's the guy's name, PayPal guy? Elon Musk. Yeah, Elon Musk. He he owned PayPal. He he sells out. He he makes some money. Guess what? I did this so I could go to the moon and Mars, man. You know, I was just nobody else was going to do it, so I made a bunch of money, sold out going going to Mars. To launch its robotic payload to the moon aboard a Falcon 9, Astrobotic officials announced Sunday, February 6th. The mission could launch as soon as December 2013, team officials said. Astrobotic's expedition will search for water and deliver payloads and with the robot, narrating its adventure while sending 3D video. This is already going on now. <clears throat> Within a couple of years... Private space travel is is going to be very commonplace. And there's only one thing in technology that we're, we're waiting on to have a big, giant expansion of we're going someplace else. Propulsion. That's what this whole thing is about. And there are many new areas of propulsion, including little fusion reactors. Imagine you got the, the nozzle of a spacecraft. And here where you see my microphone, there are a bunch of lasers hitting, uh, uh, what do they call it, tritium or deuterium or deuterium or whatever, <laughs> hydrogen, okay? So it does, all of a sudden, boom, you got a fusion react <laughs> thrust. That's just one way. Then you got all, they're even talking about warp in space. They're doing, I mean, this, if humans can think of it, it's going to happen. And there are people that are doing it right now. And I have to wonder... All these people that want to control the universe, how are they going to do it once we get off planet? They're going to try. You know, who gets to claim the moon? I just saw last night, <clears throat> it, was a, uh, it was a news segment on something or history science. They were talking about they're selling property on the moon. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so everybody's buying it. I mean, you got, you know, uh, uh, they had a bunch of stars, John Travolta and Tom Cruise and, and uh, Clint Eastwood and... You know, all these other guys. I mean, people, yeah, I bought some property on the moon. Yeah, then what? Somebody goes, you know what? Well, I land my spaceship there. Now what? I give you rent. Yeah, you owe me rent. Well, who's going to enforce it? I tell you how it's going to get enforced. Whoever has the ion cannon, that's how it gets enforced. So this is uh, coming, and I just want to make sure that we open our minds to this, that we are going to have to deal with property issues. It's all about how do you defend and hold and secure and litigate property, even on the moon? Well, if uh, Elon Musk makes it to Mars, are you going to claim the whole thing? Well, tell us about the Falcon Project. You've been covering that. You know, tell me what your your you know what you got from coverage of that. Well, the thing I thought was most impressive about it was that the the Falcon Nine has uh, <laughs> launched twice now, and they've both been successful. And I mean, remarkably successful. I mean, I, I really hate to say flawless, but just darn close to it. And and that's just remarkable on a on a what amounts to prototype rockets. You know, normally they explode the first few times. Well, they had single engines that yep. were the Falcon, and it, from the Falcon, Falcon One. Yeah, and they call it from the the uh, Falcin from Star Wars. What do they call it the Millennium Falcon. Millennium Falcon. <laughs> that's where Elon Musk got I that from. I did not know that. I got that out of that book, The All Rocketeers. Right. And I go, oh, that's good. That's good. Well, he had the single engine to test it. Now some of those failed. You know, but once yeah, they got their little they, fittings it, done, it and took everything. it took four uh, shots to get a perfect launch. I mean, they did. They, they all along the way. And the, of course, the first one was a spectacular failure. But they found out they had a washer on there that was not up to snuff, and so that was all. It was like a like a twenty cent washer or something that that they needed something that was tougher and they that, a two dollar washer. You know, it's amazing that they figured this out, and then they put it out, and then the next ones, even though they they were not completely successful the next launches were quite successful but it's still amazing to scale up from that one engine one to a nine engine beast like the falcon 9 is and and to have two flawless launches just just amazing well they also have a capsule the dragon yep 
And they've been test dropping that, and they should be doing some test launches with it. And actually, they're supposed to be going to the space station uh, to uh, resupply them because the, the capsule looks like it's so good and the rocket's so good. It's like, heck, let's just friggin' go there and use that as our test. And NASA needs the help. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> and I'm going, yeah, they're saying they can go to the, uh, um, the what do they call it, SSI? ISS. ISS, International, International Space, Space Station. Station. Okay. So they, they go, well, they they can go to the International Space Station. I'm going, why the heck would they want to go there? <laughs> you know, what's there? Because they're going to get paid. <laughs> yeah, you know, Bigelow Aerospace already has big, giant, much larger space stations in orbit now, and now they're talking about doing the rec room for the space station. Yep. You know, so I'm going, you know, and, and they tell you about this win. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. Readers of freedomsphoenix.com are constantly provided the information that detail the real news between the lines of propaganda about government policies and the true relationship we all have with coercive governments. Learn the true condition of our economy, innovations and technological breakthroughs in energy, health, computer science, and space travel. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media, the media that is so last century. Corporate media has evolved into nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but we now have a fantastic alternative. FreedomsPhoenix.com provides constant news updates on the issues that affect our lives in the most important ways. Our liberty and our property are under constant attack, and FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda while encouraging the participation of our readers. Join us at FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's Freedoms with an S, Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com, where the revolution between the ears has already matured. Toured.